if you are looking for some support for current affairs if you are a fresher you are a working professional you are a repeater but you want some support for current affairs then i have a program for you uh, i have given the uh, brochure and also the uh, announcement video link in the description you can watch if you are interested hello all welcome back to current affairs atlas series i'm gunam madhivanan from offices ias academy in today's video we are going to discuss about artemis accord but before understanding about artemis accord let us try to understand about five international treaties five un based treaties <coughs> related to outer space that we will understand then we will go for this artemis accord what are those five treaties the first treaty is outer space treaty so this treaty is prohibiting the countries to place weapons of mass destruction in the orbits like how we place satellites in the orbits like that countries should not place weapons of mass destructions in the orbit okay so that is uh, one point the outer space treaty discusses and also the treaty also prohibits the countries in stationing such weapons of mass destruction in celestial bodies like moon or any other uh, celestial body that is two things this treaty says that a country should not keep weapons of mass destruction in any orbit likewise the countries should not place weapons of mass destruction in celestial bodies like moon okay so this is what this outer space treaty uh, discusses about then other four treaties are rescue agreement 1968 so countries which have signed this agreement which helps to cooperate rescue of astronauts in outer space when the accident happens in outer space other countries also come forward to rescue the astronauts liability convention now uh, america is launching a satellite or any spacecraft that is damaging other countries satellites or other countries spacecrafts then they have to cover they have to take care of the liability okay the damage has to be covered by that country the registration of the registration convention 1976 so this convention uh, is making all the countries putting objects in space to register their objects so before india is launching a satellite before india sending a spacecraft we have to register we have to register there will be a common register where we have to pass the information that we are sending a satellite now we are sending a spacecraft now so registration convention right then the moon agreement so the moon agreement aims to govern the activities going on in moon and other celestial bodies like mars etc so this will govern the activities of on the moon and other celestial bodies see if you take india india has given its signature sign for all the five treaties but india did not ratify this moon agreement so india signed all the five but india ratified only four this moon agreement india did not ratify okay moon agreement was not ratified by india and you should know this moon agreement see this moon agreement all are un conventions but however us was instrumental us was instrumental in coming up with this agreement us was instrumental but us did not sign the agreement why us did not sign because this moon agreement which is declaring moon other celestial bodies as global common as global common global common means it cannot be owned by one country it cannot be owned by one country okay so today let's say for example i have 5 acres of land in uh, india it is owned by me okay now if it is a global common it is open for all for example example for global common is high seas <coughs> high seas what is high seas this is india 200 nautical miles up to 200 nautical miles in the sea in the indian ocean in all sides in all sides the resources are exclusive to india okay so up to 200 nautical miles it is called as exclusive economic zone okay those countries which are uh, having opening to the seas up to 200 nautical miles one nautical mile is roughly 1.8 kilometers up to 200 nautical miles it is going to be for them 
right but beyond the student nautical miles that is called as high seas anybody any country can do exploration in this high seas because high sea is a global common like that this moon agreement the original moon agreement is trying to make moon and other celestial uh, objects as global common so moon cannot be owned by a country or a space in moon cannot be owned by a country two acres of land in moon i cannot buy as per the moon agreement so that america was not okay with america was not okay with so america did not sign this moon agreement india signed but india did not ratify it right so now the artemis accord artemis accord that is the actual topic that was introduced by usa so usa along with seven countries came with this artemis accord which is nothing but a uh, another newer version of moon agreement the original moon agreement which america did not sign only right india signed did not ratify the original moon agreement is trying to make moon mars other celestial objects as global common if it is agreed as global common then it is now it cannot be owned by one single country or one single uh, player so america did not sign that moon agreement so america now in 2020 they came with a new agreement called as artemis accord so this accord was introduced by usa along with seven countries so this artemis accord which discusses about the principles which govern the civil exploration and the use of outer space like moon mars comets asteroids for peaceful purpose for peaceful purpose there are 27 signatories to artemis accord india is also a signatory to this accord why artemis accord was in use because india signed india signed this artemis accord that's why it was in use that's why it was in use right but if i have to explain about artemis record i have to explain about moon agreement if i have to explain about moon agreement i have to explain about the five important outer space treaties that is why i started from there so now let's have a look at the principles that governed this artemis accord <coughs> 